to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The subject of the grace of God has been one that um, has not really been properly understood in the body of Christ. There's been all kinds of um, variations and ideas as to what, what the grace of God really is and, and what is the scope of its impact and its applicability in the life of a believer. So we have all kinds of, there's been an age long uh, controversy as to what the grace of God is and, and the jurisdiction of balance and so on and so forth. And then the most important thing is to know how to apply the revelation of the grace of God. So I trust that God will grant us grace to really understand this topic in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Ephesians chapter 2, from where we got the theme, Ephesians chapter 2. I want to encourage all the members of, of, of um, the Christ Chapel International churches, please pay attention, listen with all your heart, and let this truth bless you in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll begin our reading from verse 7. Ephesians 2 and verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, for by grace are ye saved. Now he's talking of salvation. By grace are ye saved true faith it says and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god we we'll read verse 9 the last verse it says not of one. notice that jesus is also mentioned the grace of our lord jesus christ the next verse second timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 second timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 apostle paul is mentoring his son in the gospel timothy and he says thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Jesus or in Christ Jesus. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There is the grace that is found in Christ Jesus. And it says a man can find strength in that grace. So that grace not only saves, the grace can empower. Take note of these readings. The Bible tells us that it is by grace that we are saved. So there is salvation through this grace. Now he's saying be strong in the grace. So there is the grace that empowers. Next verse. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Apostle Peter is teaching now. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. He said, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace. Grow in grace. That means there is provision for growth, even in the grace of God. This is very powerful. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Two more scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. We're examining the scriptures that deal with the issue and the subject of grace. Now, this was Paul, theologically speaking. He was, he was buffeted again and again and he went to the Lord. He besought the Lord thrice and this was his response, the Lord's response to Paul. And he said unto me, my grace 
is sufficient for thee. So there is sufficiency in the grace of God. My grace is sufficient for you. Now he meets the Lord about infirmity. Remember, this is a context of weakness. This is a context of, of, of a bodily weakness, sickness, and infirmity. And his response is that the answer to that weakness and the answer to that infirmity is also grace. So we are seeing that when it has to do with deliverance, it is grace. When it has to do with empowerment, it is grace that answers. When it now has to do with insufficiency and the limitations, it is still grace. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, aha, here it is again, is made perfect in your weakness. How is the strength made perfect? Through this grace. My grace is sufficient for you. The last scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Shalapos kabrandiga balatus. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Apostle Peter says, But the God of all grace, the God of all grace. Now take note, this is where one of the few places in scripture where he now adds all to grace. But the God of all grace, that immediately suggests that grace is dimensional. But the God of all grace, not just grace, all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, by that grace, the multifaceted dimensions of that grace, make you perfect, make you established, make you strengthened, and settle you all by grace that the grace of god can perfect a man the grace of god can establish a man the grace of god can strengthen a man and the grace of god can settle a man all by grace very very powerful in fact let's take one more scripture titus titus i wrote it down here titus chapter 2 we'll read 11 and 12 titus chapter 2 11 and 12 it says for the grace of god that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men so there is a grace that appears to all men all men teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men what is the grace of God? Let's, let's, let's deal with this. What, what exactly is the grace of God? We talk a lot about the grace of God. And you know, in our world, when, when someone you know, wants to give the glory to God, they just say, look, it's, it's God's grace. And, and that is true. But what exactly is the grace of God? Because if we are dealing with the, the exceeding greatness of His grace, it is important for us to understand what the grace of God is. I wrote down two very powerful definitions here that I'd like us to consider. Number one, <clears throat> that the grace of God is a state of awareness, a state of consciousness. Listen very carefully. The grace of God is a state of awareness, a state of consciousness, a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and possibilities contained in God and access through the Christ. This is very, very important. So the grace of God, the first definition is that the grace of God um, represents an awareness, a consciousness. It is a disposition of understanding. So the grace of God has to do with a, a belief system. It has to do with a consciousness. A consciousness of all the limitless provisions and possibilities that are contained in God. Please understand this. Most times we limit grace to just salvation or we limit grace to just the unmerited access. That is wonderful, but that is a very limiting understanding of grace. That every time we talk about the grace of God, it encapsulates every provision, 
every possibility that is contained in God and accessed through Jesus Christ. So the consciousness, the awareness of that unlimited dimension of provision of possibilities in God is called grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Just to buttress on this definition, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Very, very powerful scripture. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says, Thanks be to God, you know, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said he had blessed us with all blessings in, in heavenly places, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. All spiritual blessings. This is my definition of grace. That every spiritual blessing that is found in God accessed through Christ is called grace. So faith is grace. Wisdom is grace. Power is grace. Anointing is grace. Speed is grace. Restoration is grace. Every dimension of possibility that is accessed through Christ, available to the believer, is called grace. It is not just limited to salvation or deliverance or even empowerment. A consciousness. So as a believer, I am aware that this God that we serve and one who I have come to receive his life and surrender my life and my all to, he's a limitless God and that there are infinite possibilities that are in God and that the gateway to access all these possibilities is the person, Christ. There is no other name, the Bible says, under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So it's very important. There are spiritual blessings. They are in heavenly places routed through the Christ. That is the first definition of grace. It is a consciousness. It is an awareness. Number two, the second definition of the grace of God is an empowerment resulting from that knowledge. The empowerment that results from that consciousness is called grace. The empowerment that results from the consciousness that God is unlimited and that there are infinite possibilities that are contained in him. That by believing that truth and having that consciousness, there is an empowerment that is released, that energizes the believer to walk and to live in keeping with the conditions that make those spiritual realities manifest. So this is the second definition of grace. It is an empowerment resulting from that knowledge, that consciousness. What consciousness? The consciousness of the limitless provisions and possibilities that are in God through Christ. And that this empowerment energizes the believer to walk and to live in keeping with the conditions that will make those possibilities manifest. Now, let, 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 let's understand what I'm trying to discuss here. Number one, I'm talking about a consciousness. A consciousness that there are spiritual blessings that are unlimited that reside in God access through Christ. Then number two, that having that consciousness has a spiritual implication that there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness. It is that empowerment that energizes the believer to walk in keeping with the conditions that will make those spiritual blessings manifest. This is grace. The consciousness and the empowerment from that consciousness, the awareness, the revelation, the understanding of the limitless possibilities that are in God, the spiritual blessings that are in God in heavenly places routed through the office of Jesus Christ, and the empowerment that comes from that understanding is what the Bible calls the grace of God. Very, very important. Very quickly, I wrote something down here. I said the highest revelation 
the highest revelation of the grace of God or grace is the awareness of what we have come to understand in the body of Christ as the finished work of Christ. The highest revelation of grace, the highest revelation of grace is the awareness, the consciousness of what we call the finished work of Christ. What is the finished work of Christ? The spiritual blessings that have been made available to the saints on account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The spiritual blessings that have been made available, the spiritual blessings that have been made available, deliverance from sin and death and hell and condemnation is only one of the many spiritual blessings that come to the believer abundant life the wisdom it says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us and then it begins to list seven dimensions wisdom power worthy is the lamb that was slain so he was slain and he purchased unto us all of these spiritual blessings. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. He was not just slain, but he received. From where? From Satan, who until that time had been the God of this world. The keys of dominion given to him. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us riches. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us wisdom, to receive for us strength, to receive for us honor, to receive for us glory, and to receive for us blessing. You find that in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. This was the worship of the elders in heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us the saints power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessing the finished work of christ a revelation of the spiritual blessings that have been made available to the saints only exclusively on account of the death the burial the resurrection of jesus christ what we call theologically speaking the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ this is very very important now the highest revelation of grace i wrote here is an awareness of the finished work of christ alongside the advantage it has provided for the believer today it is not only an awareness of the finished work of christ but an awareness of the advantage that on account of this finished work, the believer is not disadvantaged. That on account of the finished work of Christ, there is a dimension of advantage that we enjoy. That it was not for nothing Jesus Christ died. Now, please, you have to understand this because we live in a world now that continues to fight spirituality. We live in a world that continues to demean the faith life as though it is just a religion like every other religion. But our faith work is a work of power. Our faith work is a work that is 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 that has has everything supernatural. From the entrance of the kingdom to living the kingdom life to the final, it is everything power. There is an advantage that the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus has provided to me and to you. There is an advantage. Please bury this in your consciousness. There is an advantage. I am not just disadvantaged. Jesus died and brought me in a position of advantage. And we're going to be exploring some of these things. But it is, it, is, it is enough for you to know that there is an advantage. That the blood of Jesus was not shed for nothing. That his death was not just a historic occurrence. But that there are spiritual implications to these things that culminate into an advantage here and now. An advantage that provides power. An advantage that provides riches an advantage that provides wisdom an advantage that provides strength an advantage that provides honor an advantage that provides glory an advantage that provides blessings and ultimately an advantage that secures the eternal destiny of the saint this is the grace of God 
So let me do a very quick recap that I began to tell us that the grace of God has to do first and foremost with a consciousness. Please listen. A consciousness, an awareness, a disposition of understanding about the limitless, the greatness of our God and the vast possibilities. The Bible calls it riches, the riches of his grace, the extent of the supernatural possibilities that are in God now through Christ made available to the saints this is very important and I did say that the grace of God is also the empowerment that comes from that consciousness now you see the thing with 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 God and this is how this is how God works every time you believe a report every time you believe a truth Every time you believe a spiritual information, every time you believe a revelation, there is always a power dimension. There is always an empowerment that backs every revelation in the kingdom. Many of you have listened to uh, my teachings and I've shared there a, a vision that I had many years ago where I saw a great door, a very giant door, and um, I saw that door had many smaller doors attached to it and scriptures were written on every door and it was opening and closing opening and closing and the lord let me know that all these doors are doors of revelation and that every time you walk in the consciousness of any kingdom truth the grace dimension the empowerment to demonstrate and validate that truth also backs it that means that any truth that you do not have the grace to defend is not yet a reality in your life the consciousness and the empowerment the consciousness and the energizing this is very important write this down and please listen carefully the grace of god provides access underline the word access if you're writing the grace of God provides access to the provisions of God. The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God. The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God, but does not automatically make them manifest in your life. Take note of this. The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God. Let me repeat it slowly. The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God, but does not automatically make them manifest on earth or in your life. Herein lies the confusion of many believers as to the theology of grace. That the grace of God is responsible for providing access, not for making it manifest automatically. No, by grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. When the Bible says it is the gift of God and it is not of works, he talks about the saving grace. And then he talks about the, the contribution of man in saving himself. And so the Bible says man did not contribute in saving himself. He only contributed in receiving and making that which was true in Christ to become manifest. And this has always been the character of grace. As many as have received him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them power to become. He gave them power to become. As at the time they received, they did not have the power yet. It was when they received, he gave them power to become. So it starts with receiving. Then between receiving and becoming, power is what interfaces it. Please understand. You receive, you are empowered, then you become. You receive, you are empowered, then you become. If, look, if you understand these people of God, your life will be a wonder to you. And if you do not understand this, you will be frustrated over a subject that looks so simple, but controls the tragedy and the pain and the limitation of many people. 
you receive you are empowered you become you receive you are empowered what do you receive an information a body of truth a consciousness that consciousness comes with it the empowerment the empowerment strengthen you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for actualization then you become so let me repeat myself one more time i i, I pray that we are understanding what i'm teaching the grace of god provides access underline the word access access means potential access means a possibility that can be yours under certain conditions when you have access to your money it may not necessarily be in your hand but you have the atm and you have the code the atm card you have the code and you can go and under a certain condition the physical cash the dollar the pound the euro and 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 the naira whatever currency you use can come to you right so i can receive for instance um a hundred thousand pounds or a hundred thousand dollars into my account it has been given to me so i have access to it but having access does not necessarily mean that i am holding it physically access to it means that the hindrances have been taken away but then the bank that facilitated that transfer must educate me on how to withdraw that money from my account into my hand remember the ultimate destination is for it to get into my hand not just to remain in my account my account is a is a system of hope it gives me hope but it should not just stop at hope i should be able to handle it blessed be the name of the lord so the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god but it does not automatically make them manifest on earth or in your life john chapter 1 and verse 14 let's have a scriptural backing for that 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 point the bible says and the word was made flesh now watch this whether it was made flesh or not it was still the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning so becoming flesh was not what made it the word it was all powerful from the realm of the spirit but it could not profit us understand this the word could not profit us just being the word in the heavenlies there had to be a system to make the word to become flesh and dare to dwell among us and the bible says and we beheld his glory the glory as of the begotten of the father full of grace when was it full of grace when it dwelt among us full of grace and truth the word was made flesh manifest now this is where this whole subject concerns us we thank god for the grace of god the limitless possibilities and provisions that are in god through christ but the saints need to access these possibilities to walk in victory remember we need to walk in victory if it is true that jesus christ died rose again if it is true that he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me if it is true that man is the zenith and the apex of his creation then there has to be a demonstration of that dominion that power that kingdom in fact when jesus was teaching to pray he said for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory and he's handed it over to man i give you power i give you authority but that authority cannot work in my life and your life until we understand this the grace of god gives access to the provisions of god but it does not automatically make them manifest access 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 that is the assignment of the grace of god to grant you access to the riches of god in christ but it takes another agency that is responsible for its manifestation here and now write this down why do we need a manifestation of the grace of god in our lives not just the awareness not just access why do we need to move past access to manifestation number one three reasons the first reason why we need 
to move past just access to the grace of God to its manifestation is that it is in the manifestation of grace that the love of the Father is revealed. It is in the manifestation of grace that the love of the Father is revealed to both mankind and creation. That means that if the grace of God is not made manifest among us, it will be difficult for man and creation to see and comprehend the extent of the love of God. Why do we need a manifestation of the grace of God in our lives and in our world here and now? Number one, it reveals the love of the Father. If it is true that God is love, if it is true that he cares for me, if it is true that God wants restoration, if it is true that he defeated Satan, if it is true that he is King of kings and Lord of lords, then there has to be a way that that spiritual truth is translated into our lives. When we see it, then we are able to give him glory. Then creation can say truly of a truth, the love of God has been made manifest to creation. That is why Jesus did not just die as the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. That is why Jesus didn't die in heaven. He had to come and act out that death on earth because this was where we, need, we needed to see him. He became a man. He did not die in the secret. He did not die in a room. He died openly. Why? For us to see. We needed to see the love of the Father on display. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Let's look at three scriptures very quickly. That buttress on the fact that it is in the manifestation. Every time there is a manifestation of the love of the Father, it is always, um, it brings glory to God. It, it reveals his love. There, there cannot be an awareness of the love of God without it being manifest in our realm. For God so loved the world, popular scripture. That he gave his only, now not his only now, his first begotten now because we have become the begotten also. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he loved the world. He proved that he loved the world not just by making a pronunciation. He had to send Jesus down to the earth to act out his love in a painful death. John 10 and verse 10, Jesus is teaching here. And here's what he says. He says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. To kill, to steal, to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that they might have life. The word there is way. And they might have, and that they might have it more abundantly. So he's saying, This is, I came to give man abundant life as an expression of my love. So if that expression, if that abundant life is not at work practically in my life today, it begins to compel me to doubt the reality of the love of God. In his earth walk, when Jesus walked upon the earth, Every miracle that he performed, every mighty manifestation from the feeding of the 5,000, from the, the multiplying of, of, you know, of bread, from the turning of water to wine, raising the dead, healing the sick, you know, multiplying fish, all of the miracles that he did. Every time he did them, he let them know that these were tokens, they were expressions of the love of a father they could not see who had sent him as a representation of the love of the father so it is important that the grace of god is made manifest so that we can behold practically the love of the father through jesus christ john 8 and 32 the last verse john 8 and verse 32 for this this point john 8 and verse 32 john 8 are we there 31 okay let's look at 31 and then 32 then said jesus to those jews which believed in him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed let's go to 32 it says and you shall know the truth as a person not just an idea and the truth shall make you free 
as a revelation of the love of God that when you are free, liberty, that liberty, liberty, remember it is always grace and truth and that this grace and truth can set you free. It can bring you liberty complete liberty so if my life remains in bondage if my life and my family and my territory remains in bondage it begins to question the validity of the love of god for me and towards me this is very powerful the second reason why we need a manifestation of the grace of god in our lives not just an awareness of it not just access to it but we need it visibly manifest here and now is that it is in the manifestation of the grace of God that believers have what the Bible calls the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. Please write that down. The fullness of joy. John 16 and verse 24. Now, understand this. We do not need physical manifestations to have joy. We can have joy even in the midst of pain. We can have joy even in the midst of chaos. But we cannot have the fullness of joy until there is reception. The Bible says, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. He said, Ask and ye shall receive that your joy that you already have may be full. So even before that miracle, you already have joy. But your joy is not full. And that does not culminate into abundant life. He wants our joy to be full. Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. Very powerful scripture. The Bible says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Verse 5. This was Philip in Samaria. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Uh -huh. Six. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Now look very carefully. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Not just perceiving. Uh -uh. The reality of that grace that saves came down to their level. To the point where they could hear and they could see the miracles which he did. And as a result, verse 7, it says for unclean spirits. This is what they had and this is what they saw. The grace of God. Access to the power of God. But not just remaining as access. Being manifest now. They could hear it. They could see it. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies that were lamed, were healed. Hallelujah. Verse 8. This was the result of all of that. And there was great joy, not just in their lives. And there was great joy in that city. The fullness of joy. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.